it's a light state of um, sedation. It's not as, as deep as it would be to actually place the pins, but it allows us to work safely with her so she can't hurt us and that she doesn't get too stressed by the experience. Dorian, what condition was the bird in when she first arrived? When she arrived with us, she couldn't take any weight at all on the leg. The leg had been severely broken and had already started trying to heal and it was starting to try and heal skew. So without intervention, she'd never have been able to walk on that leg again. Kerry, where did you find this bird? She was found next door to the Rhino Line Nature Reserve under those huge power lines that run along there. She was found underneath one of the power lines. And what do you think happened? I think she collided with the overhead wires and she must have collided uh, towards her pelvis area and obviously just landed. What we've done now is we've passed an endotracheal tube which goes into her windpipe and we'll now be able to monitor her breathing carefully and help her to breathe as well. The staff at Ornestapurt are skilled in working with some very unusual animals and great care is taken in looking after the well-being of this Cape Vulture. I've got Dr. Morwood here. Um, just to look at the radiograph and everything. Ian, this is the post op. Do I just take out the screw pins? Yeah, so I'll just take these threaded pins out. Looks good, eh? Okay, this is just a bandage that was covering the pins to protect them. This is an acrylic that we use to hold the pins together. And what we're going to be doing today is the final removal. That's quite a surgery you've got there. Yeah. Uh oh, that's a serious <laughs> This is a very expensive special pin cutter from Buller's Warehouse. <laughs> Specialised veterinary care emphasises the importance of teamwork. Everyone knows their role and they pull together to get the job done as efficiently as possible. In this case, a male vet is deemed most proficient with the wire cutters. In the final phase of the pin removal, the pins holding the primary internal leg pin are unscrewed. It all looks a little industrial, but it's done the job perfectly. The leg has healed, giving this vulture a second chance. Gary, this is a great opportunity for us to talk a little bit about vulture anatomy, especially the head. I'm noticing that the eyelid comes from the bottom upward. But it's just a protective membrane, I think. <laughs> yeah, they tend to close up from the bottom. Yeah. From the bottom upward. Gorgeous animals. They are gorgeous, aren't they? And is that the sort of nasal area? Yeah, that's the nostril. But poor, poor sense of smell. But excellent sense of sight. Right. We're done. Yep, can I see a range of motion? Beautiful, she's been walking on it. Look at that. Oh, good. So yeah. she's actually been getting around well on the limb. Yeah, she even ran away from me trying to catch it. Oh dear. <laughs> she's going to wake up very soon, so I'm taking this tube out. Now you can have a quick look at her mouth, see the tongue and everything. Yeah. Mm. Looking deep inside, the grooves and serrations on the vulture's tongue enable rapid feeding on the soft tissue of a carcass. Now that she's come round, the drowsy bird is carefully picked up and carried back to the vehicle where she can sleep off the anaesthesia. Okay, Kerry, so homeward bound. Absolutely, and tomorrow, her release. Good one. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bless Susie. You're watching Wild Limited. Having left Onestaport, where an injured vulture was checked and pins in her leg removed, our journey takes us to in Yorker Ridge. Owned by Kerry Volta, the farm is closely involved in vulture research. This vulture will be a part of pioneering research before her release. Her blood will be drawn for a haemoglobin study, the first of its kind in the world. There's not a lot of information about vultures and they're difficult birds to study. Even something as straightforward as determining the sex is a challenge in Cape vultures. 
The haemoglobin study under the auspices of the National Zoo in Pretoria hopes to shed some scientific light on these enigmatic birds. There's a saying that goes, it's in the blood. And in this pioneering project, the haemoglobin in the vulture's veins flows towards its secret code, the DNA, revealing the key to its species. We speak to Dr. Adrian Tordisa to find out more. Adrian, just talk us through what you're busy doing as you're going. OK, we're just trying to see if we can see the, the vein here. They have quite a sort of thick skin over their feet, so it's a little tricky. I'm going to try and get about um, two mils, and uh, we're trying to we're going to put it into an anticoagulant EDTA tube now. Okay. Basically, it already contains a substance which prevents the actual blood from clotting. The blood mustn't become clotted, as it cannot then be used for DNA testing. Right. And then we just need to make sure you're not bleeding anymore. OK. All done. Yes. The blood sampling is watched with interest by students, including Putti Mafodi. Putti, you're doing your master's focusing on animal genetics. Why is the bleeding of these vultures important to you? Uh, what I can say is the only way to get hemoglobin from our samples is only if we can have uh, blood from all these animals that we want to involve in our study. And what are you going to do with the blood? Hemoglobin profiling of African wildlife, because uh, from uh, genetic studies, we can be able to tell the sex of the animal. Given the vulnerable conservation status of Cape vultures, studies are important research tools and can only provide insight and understanding. Everything is geared towards saving the species. Antoinette, this is the very first time worldwide that haemoglobin is being taken for this specific study. Talk to us about it. Yes, this forms part of basic research where we can now look at species differences using the hemoglobin complex as an identification criterion. So through the hemoglobin, you're able to establish a blood profile per species? Yes. It's correct to say that this project is in its infancy and you're still learning? Yes, yes. This is all baseline information that we are now gathering. And uh, the application still for conservation, we are not sure. That is why we are doing the research. Since the bird is endemic to southern Africa, if our local population of Cape vultures becomes extinct, the entire species is lost. Things are looking positive, however. There are many people who are passionately involved in vulture conservation. Vultures are still faced with daily environmental and habitat challenges, which remain a threat. But thanks to conservation heroes, each bird saved makes a difference. Without care and rehabilitation, a recovery like this would not be possible. Digital technology provided by Sony South Africa. Production vehicles supplied by Mitsubishi.